So for this question, you could use Desmos, but I don't think it's as safe here as it is on other questions. This is a case where, because I have seen many, many questions like this, I kind of know ex instantly what they want from me, right? They're talking about the number of solutions, right? So they don't want me to find the solution. They just want to know how many there are. And because there is no x squared in this either equation here, uh, we are going to use basic ideas about lines and slopes to solve this. So I know it doesn't look like a line, but I think of it as that, right? I'm gonna divide this in half. I'm gonna think of it as two separate lines. And so if I wanted to kind of put them in y equals mx plus b format, it would be y equals negative 49x plus zero, right? There's no b. y equals negative 98x plus zero plus b, right? So when I put them in that format, what I'm very much interested in is the slope. So here, right, that's all I really got is that it's the number attached to the x. And because they are different slopes, um, I know that I only have, or I, I have one solution, right? So exactly one. Now, a couple other things to note is it would never ever be the case that if we have lines, we have two solutions. It's just not possible because the lines go straight. They can't bend back on each other and cross. Now, if we had an x squared, that's where we can have two solutions because then it's a curve, right? A parabola curves and it's possible to have two intersection points, two x-intercepts, whatever you want to think of them as for the purpose of the question. Here though, really only a, b, and d were possibilities. Now the reason we would have zero solutions is if the slopes were the same, but we had uh, different y-intercepts. So um, we don't have any y-intercepts here, they're both zero, so those are the same, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, the in infinitely many solutions would be everything is the same, right? So that would be the same slope and uh, the same y-intercept because they would be the same line. Now, um, to me, that's very easy to tell when we have two linear equations because you can just look at the equation. Maybe we have to manipulate it slightly or do what I did here and kind of split it in two. But notice what I didn't do. I didn't like add 98x to the other side to try to solve for x. When they ask for the number of solutions, I'm not really interested in finding what the exact solutions are. I'm not trying to solve because if the answer were a or d, I literally would not be able to solve. So uh, that's why it's a bad instinct when they ask for the number of solutions to start kind of moving things across an equal sign. If you wanna kind of simplify what's on one equal sign, or one side of the equal so that it looks kind of like an mx plus b, that's okay. But starting to move things across is probably gonna get you in trouble. Now we could put this into Desmos, and if we do, we kind of see the answer. Because we see it, we have a vertical line. And what that basically means then is that uh, this the Desmos is solving this this equation and finding what the value of x is, and it's it's zero. That's not that hard to to figure out normally, but um, it gives us a vertical line at that spot to tell us that that's an answer. And so because I knew that c wasn't possible, that you couldn't have two solutions, I would also know just from this picture that it's got to be choice b, right? If it were zero solutions, I wouldn't see any line at all. Same as if it were infinitely many solutions. And that's why I don't like the Desmos way of solving these because if we put it in just like this, we're gonna have two, we're gonna have just like lines that we've gotta go searching for. And they could be anywhere, right? So we might kind of think that we have no solutions, but really if we zoom out, we see that we have a line, right? Or what's the difference between zero and infinitely many, right? They both would look the same. They would just give us a blank graph. So we would still need to do some other work in order to figure out which one is which. Um, we could have, graphed these lines as a uh, separate equation. So we could have just done y equals negative 49x and y equals negative 98x, kind of like I did on my page. Uh, and that would give us two lines that move in different directions. And eventually they would intersect. You would see that they're not parallel. You would see that they're not the same line. And then you would know that it's got one solution that way. So in that case, we're talking more about intersection points. But again, I don't really like the Desmos method for questions involving number of solutions when we do not have an x squared. Okay, when it's just lines, you're better off thinking about the rules and just kind of applying them. It's usually faster. Um, if we had an x squared though, that might change my decision making. And so then I might think of Desmos as, as maybe a little bit better. It just depends on how that question works. So uh, just know they're gonna give you at least one of these types of questions in every SAT. They love this. So you gotta memorize the rules. I basically have them right here uh, in this, um, in the, in the choices here. But I also have a lesson, just search my channel for number of solutions no x squared. If you get just number of solutions, you'll see I've got a lesson for both what happens when there is an x squared and when there isn't. They're both really good because like I said, pretty much gonna come up on every SAT.